Hello, my name is Barbara Palmer, and I'm a longtime member of the Morgan Hill branch of American Association of University Women. I'm very happy to be here today to interview Legina Metcalf. Legina and her family came to Morgan Hill in 1954. She has lots of stories to tell about times in Morgan Hill when Morgan Hill was a small city and just growing up. So I'd like to start, Legina, with talking about um, your time at the Morgan Hill School. Uh, the Morgan Hill School is located where the community center is now on Dunn and Monterey. Uh, Lagina served there for a long time and has lots of information and knowledge about that. Would you tell us about that, Lagina? Okay, I started working at the Morgan Hill School in 1958 and I stayed there 27 years in the same office the same desk, the and what same did, chair, what did you do? and I was the secretary at Morgan Hill School, and I, um, it was a, a small school, but we did go through the eighth grade at that time, and then a few years later, they took the seventh and eighth grade out and put them into a school at Nordstrom School, but at Morgan Hill School, at that time, most of the years, um, the people, their children that went to school there, most of them were farmers. And so it was pretty nice because the parents were very active in all the school activities. They would come hmm. uh, to the school for the PTA meetings. And when in the fall, we'd have a carnival, and that was to raise money for library books because you didn't have the money then that we have now for mm -hmm. different things. So the parents were very active in helping start the library in the Morgan Hill School. And while I was there the 27 years, I worked for nine different oh, principals. Oh, I see. Can you remember any of them? And I remember all of them. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, the first one was uh, Robert Rice. And then I had uh, Ed Belay. And I had Bill Forster. And I had Jim McDonald. And I had Ben Sassnett. And Jean, um, was Jean Patterson Wright at mm -hmm. that time uh, was one of the principals there, and um, Bob Padretti. I don't know if I've named all of them or not, but uh, and the school was small enough that we had. I loved the big trees out in ah, front yes. of their school, and the children would go outside uh, in the mornings and salute the flag. They the flag would go up and and we'd always have some Boy Scouts that would raise the flag, and they did the flag salute outside. So it was I see. kind of impressing. And then we had kindergarten through sixth grade all the rest of the years that I was there. Do you remember how many children were at school in Morgan Hill School? I think uh, at one time we had over 400. I see. But then it kind of, I think at the last, there, there was less than that. Mm -hmm because mm -hmm. they started other schools, uh, P.A. Walsh. And my girls, uh, I have two girls, uh, Barbara and Vicki, and they both went to Morgan Hill School. And then they also went to P.A. Walsh School and to um, Nordstrom School and Live Oak. I see. How did the children get to school? Uh, most of them, uh, we had buses. Uh, we had school buses. and. Um, of course, then they didn't have to pay to ride the bus. Yes. <laughs> and, they, um, and then a lot of the children walked to school. Mm -hmm. I'm here today and very pleased to be here today with a very longtime resident of Morgan Hill, Mary Hiraki. Mary came to Morgan Hill in 1941 as a brand new bride. And she has some wonderful stories to tell about Morgan Hill and what was happening here during that time. Mary, can you tell us what it was like and what you were uh, doing when you first came to Morgan Hill in 1941? Well, of course, the Morgan Hill town was about two blocks long, you know, that's about it. Uh -huh. And there were more farmers out in the surrounding areas. I see. And, and big farmers, you know, big orchardists. And we lived on Cochrane, about right across from um, uh, Marie Calendar. Oh, yes. Uh, right mm -hmm. across the mm -hmm. And that was wide open field. Oh, no so buildings, no, buildings, no buildings, no Target, no <laughs> ribbons. And my husband had started strawberries there. 
at 14 acres of strawberries. Oh my. Mm -hmm. And we, that's where we, I live until the war started and of course everybody was evacuated. But at that time, we had two Japanese American neighbors next door to us on the same avenue. And there was another family on um, Watsonville Road, mm -hmm. Japanese Americans, you know, you say parents. I think we were the only Japanese Americans there at that I time. I see, mm -hmm. I see. And you talk about the evacuation. Tell us a little bit about that and exactly who was evacuated and what happened during that well, time. Well, all Japanese, regardless of their citizenship, I see. were all evacuated. And uh, Morgan Hill, south of Morgan Hill, uh, including Gilroy, went to Salinas uh, for the... Tamperon, no, no, the Rodeo Grounds. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. And we were there. We joined other Japanese Americans from Watsonville and San Benito, Santa Cruz, that area. So it was a little town there. Mm -hmm. And uh, in those days, you know, uh, people tended to stay separately. They respected other people's I privacy. See. We didn't, we weren't that closely uh, situated with na close neighbors, you know, we're far apart. I see. And so we were thrown into this camp mm. where we lived <laughs> and slept in the same building. I and, see, yes. And ate together, and I think it was kind of hard. Very Even difficult. If we were all Japanese Americans, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. But we survived that, mm -hmm. and, and that area was sent to Arizona mm -hmm. later on. Oh, so you were moved from Salinas mm -hmm. to oh, Arizona. Yes, uh, and uh, did you have children at this time, or was that before you I was pregnant oh. uh -huh, with my first. My, my husband farmed strawberries, and you know, we had gasoline delivered to the farms. All the farmers did. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting. He had three suppli two suppliers, prominent, and one of the suppliers cut him off right away. That was really? the company. Really? But the other supplier kept on delivering, and that was really, you know, mm -hmm. interesting mm -hmm. how businesses work. Kind of shows how ambivalent everybody yeah, was uh -huh. about this. And that kind of set the uh, feeling for us so that when we did come back, we naturally uh, had the s supplier who helped us at the beginning. Sure. But we, we just couldn't connect with the other one. Oh, my my yeah. husband refused to. Sure. He remembered the loyalty to some sure. people. And it, it may be a little thing now, you know, because times are so different. Mm -hmm. But in those days, it, it was traumatic of course. for us. Of course. And also, now over the radio, you do have certain codes that you don't, you know, um, talk about people. <laughs> but I can remember several news Casters were very, very strongly against even the Japanese Americans here, and we had nothing to do. Well, the war course. started, and we were all going to be shipped out. One of the first uh, person to come and see us was a schoolmate of my husband, and he had his parents had offered their barn for to store our things. I see. And we had another friend who did the same thing. They were they're all gone now. When we came back to San Jose, well, the same fa uh, Alfred was his name, came and s he was working on the Jackson Ranch, you know, the Jackson mm -hmm. Ranch up here. And he wanted to leave to start a, a restaurant. So he came and asked my husband if he would take over his place until my husband found his bearing. Oh. And so that's how we came to Jackson Ranch. I it's see. Wonderful. It's been a wonderful experience, uh -huh. you know, uh, there. We were there a year and a half. <coughs> then another friend wanted to go into the strawberries, and that's my husband's love. So I see. We came on to Cochran, started the strawberries. Tell us a little bit about your family, your children. I have, we have three, a son and two daughters. They're adults. They went to Morgan Hill and San Martin oh. since we moved there, San uh -huh. Martin. Live Oak, and they went on to college, and 
and uh, are I they in the area or have yes you know? and oh wonderful mm -hmm. all three of them my are. son's um, uh, has a doctorate in medical microbiology and my next daughter has a uh, uh, doctorate in education she wonderful. nursing is her thing and my youngest daughter just retired as a school teacher oh wonderful mm -hmm. Good. Mary just celebrated in November her 97th birthday. And so we're very pleased to have her here today. Mary, can you tell us what you remember about growing up here in Morgan Hill? Well, it seems as though we lived beyond walking distance from everything, <laughs> <laughs> except the school. There was a one-room school, and I've always been glad I had that experience because uh, they closed, closed it up a couple of years later. But uh, the attendance was anywhere from three to ten in the years I went there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, we really got individual attention from the teacher. We all had our own... Uh, lessons. None of this business of ten children coming forward and sitting in chairs while the teacher uh, listens to them read, huh? So we, we a lot of individual teaching, which we liked. Mm -hmm. And um, we ran around on the playground. In that day, I think the school had been dedicated something like uh, an acre or two and that was the schoolyard. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thought it was fun when we saw a car coming down the road because <laughs> there weren't that many cars. To see if we could run through the ditch and, and cross the road in front of the car. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know how, you know, teachers just have a way of finding out. <laughs> 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 and that become one of the largest no-nos <laughs> was not to run across the, the road or to play in the road. Mm -hmm. the, 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 we had our side of the road and that's all we had. Mm -hmm. It was all ours. But <laughs> <laughs> No running across the road in the traffic, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, almost every day there would be one or two cars that would drive by, you know. <laughs> one or two cars a day. When we were out at recess or something. So, uh -huh. so it was um, sort of an event, but uh, we, we were to ignore it because the school ground playground was what belonged to us. Uh -huh. The road did not belong to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that was the biggest no-no of the, of the three or four years I went to school there, I think. Mary, did, when you were growing up, what did you do for entertainment? Oh, my goodness. With your brothers and your sister? Well, what, what, we didn't know the meaning of the word. <laughs> Hi, my name is Katie Howard, and on behalf of the American Association of University Women from the Morgan Hill Branch, I would like to welcome Mary Lou Britton Gunter as my interviewee today for the Women's, Historic, Women's History Month in Morgan Hill. Hello, Mary Lou. Hi, Katie. Thank you for coming and joining me. Thank you for asking. I think I'd like to start with um, finding out a little bit about how your family came to this part of California and then um, maybe how they ended up down in Morgan Hill. I know they started out elsewhere. Okay. Grandpa immigrated from Ireland in 1893. <coughs> Excuse me. And he had three cousins in Santa Clara Valley. And that was his goal was to meet up with his cousins in Santa Clara County. And he came and he had a cousin named William Britton who was establishing a home and ranch in Paradise Valley. So Grandpa would go there and um, work with cousin William and help him plant his orchards. And eventually grandfather got a job with the meat company in South San Francisco and he was in charge of the refrigeration plant and he would work there and saved his money and he would come down by train to Tenet Station and get off and 
borrow a horse and go out to Paradise Valley and work and started buying his own property and in this process of working in San Francisco and starting the ranch in Paradise Valley he met my grandmother Mary Jane and they were married in 1904 in San Francisco, South San Francisco, and here's a picture of Grandpa and Grandma on their wedding day with uh, my grandmother's sisters and their husbands, and it was a very, looks pretty somber in the picture, <laughs> but it was a very wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about what they did after they married? Um, did they stay in San Francisco? Obviously not. They made it down here They somehow. stayed a little while to get a little more money, and um, they moved to um, Morgan Hill in August of 1906, and they came with their first son, William Young Britton, who uh, was just an infant. And um, they lived in a little house in um, Paradise Valley off of Sycamore Drive, and um, continued. They had, my dad was born in 1908, and after dad there were two sisters born and grandfather was full-time rancher and like any early pioneer family uh, prunes was to be their cash crop but they had cattle grazing on the hills and they milked cows and they had chickens and pigs and vegetable garden and were very self-sustaining in their their ranch and then Here's the next picture of. <laughs> this is my dad sitting on top uh, of the bridge and his brother William uh, when they were young boys going to Machado School. And uh, this must have been a Sunday because they looked pretty dressed up. And uh, they were on the uh, bridge over the, the creek. We grew up, our, all of our young years were on the ranch in a, just a little pioneer-like cottage that we lived in. And then uh, the state was into water conservation and they decided to build the Lexington Dam. And the county headquarters for CDF was in a little uh, settlement called Alma, California. And Alma is right in the bottom of uh, Lexington Dam. That necessitated moving CDF headquarters to a new location and since dad was born and raised in Morgan Hill he thought Morgan Hill area south of uh, San Jose would be the perfect place to fight rural fires with their their CDF equipment so they built CDF station it was dedicated in May of 1953 and it was a big a big event for Morgan Hill and a big event for my family because I was a sophomore at Live Oak and we moved into town and I became a city girl and still had the animals on the ranch, still belonged to 4-H, still very much a Paradise Valley family but uh, for a while we lived at um, the, in the Rangers quarters at CDF. And that's actually the current CDF up on Monterey. It is. Just south of Tennant, I think. Just south right of Tennant. Right down there. Right. Okay. And, um, and you actually lived on the property. Lived on the property. And today, the residence is still there. But I, I believe, I'm not sure if it's the foreman or, or who lives there. But the ranger doesn't live there today. Right. And then the very last thing that you brought into show is the, I think it's called the inauguration of the fire station opening. You right. Have a very the, special. There the it is. Program. The program. Yeah. The program. Um, and this is wonderful with Smokey Bear. <laughs> uh, my hero. has uh, Growing up, Smokey was my hero. I bet. Well, he's still mine. <laughs> and uh, that program, uh, I've, I saved it um, for many years. And on the reverse side, it shows the brand spanking new buildings. And they have, they've added some buildings, but all of these buildings are still there and being used. No landscaping, but yeah, it looks just the same, pretty much. Pretty much the same. Yeah. Dad planted roses, and my dad loved roses, so there were tree, uh, tree roses in a garden, and there was always a joke about 
a young forestry recruit pruned the roses wrong and would be in my dad's bad graces because dad was very proud of the roses in the garden and the landscaping of the CDF. I would like to welcome Helen O'Connell as my interviewee on the historic women of Morgan Hill. Tell me about a typical day in Morgan Hill when you were a kid, when you were a little girl. What, what would a typical day be? What it would have been like? Oh, I did get to go to the, the show. At, at, they had one theater place that was showing pictures. I did g g used to go to that particular show once in a while. There was not too much for me to do. There was more what I did at home, and that was that I was helping my dad with his work because he, it was hard for him to find the right man. Then so what, did, what kind of work did you do for your dad? Oh, well, I used to mow the lawns, and uh, <laughs> we had a lawn in the front. And I don't remember one in the back, but we did have one in the front. And uh, there was an a almond tree growing with it and all that. And then p when it came to the fruit, I always was working in the fruit. Uh, with the other farmers too, as well. The, uh, I've forgotten, uh, what's Mariani? Where Mariani has the mm -hmm. farm. I used to work in the, in the fruit business there. Okay. You I don't pick? know if I, uh, not picking there, no. I, I, and then besides that, I used to work in the cannery when I was old enough. Morgan Hill had a cannery? No, no, no not the cannery in Morgan Hill. Uh, my mother worked in the cannery in Morgan Hill, but right. not I. Okay. My brother got busy with the matches and started it. And the horses in the barn, and then the, and no fire department. And uh, so, my my husband was very f fond of the fire department. In, work, in, f in fact, he volunteered for the f at the first few years he was here in Morgan Hill to be a volunteer fireman for the department. He started it himself. I don't know exactly if he was able to get the San Jose literature on the department or not. He said, I do know a man that would give me the bylaws for the department. And just kind of organized it. Yeah, he, he was trying to, and then he got fellows to come over in, on Sundays, on their days off, to kind of get together and get to know each other. But he, whether, and I think he was one of the volunteers at the very beginning, as far as I can remember. Um, well, anyway, my brother started this fire, and uh, there was a horse. We had a horse, because of a horse and buggy days right. uh, for us. And so the horse had to be taken out. So the neighbor man came over and helped mother with the horse. Well, thank you so much, Mary, for coming and being part of our AAUW March program. Mary Malik is a longtime resident of Morgan Hill. And Mary, how did you come to live in Morgan Hill? Uh, my father and mother came here in 1927. My father uh, was a, a forestry uh, major in college, and he had he came here with a friend down from where he was working up in the in the forest, and they needed. Uh, someone to take over uh, managership of the Sterling Lumber Company here in Morgan Hill. Mm -hmm. And that's where he went to work. Uh, started Hale Lumber Yard. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which he sold in 1961 or so. Mm -hmm. uh, and to the Hammond family. But it's still Hale Lumber. Right, yeah. And tell me about your memories about growing up uh, here in Morgan, Morgan Hill. Morgan Hill. 
Well, it was very different <laughs> from the way it is now, but you know, very simple life. Every uh, it was just everyone knew each other, mm -hmm. just about, and it was just um, very small town. Um, I I went to Morgan Hill School and Live Oak High School, and that's where I met my husband, and uh, we we went to different colleges, but. We uh, came back here to Morgan Hill to raise our family. Mm -hmm. um, Morgan Hill was uh, about two blocks long, the town. Was it? Mm hmm And uh, there was a post off, one post office, one drugstore, one, two markets. Oh. Um, there was, they were actually kind of side by side. There were Telford, oh no, there were three markets. Telfer's and Larkin's, and down the street there was the Farmer's Union, mm -hmm. and that was also a hardware store. And, uh, let's see, uh, I used to walk home from Morgan Hill School every day. And did you oh, live in, excuse me, did you live yes, in town? Yes, we lived in town. We oh, lived okay. over by Britain School, actually. Oh, okay. Yes, we lived uh, right around the corner from Britain mm -hmm. office. And uh, so, yes, I walked home. And I usually, I don't know how I ended up, I think I went through, uh, there was kind of a tunnel going from the Grange Hall over to the other side of the street, which m most of the year was just uh, no water in it. Mm -hmm. So w it was kind of fun to walk through that tunnel. So it tunnel. was an underground? Underground, oh. yes. Uh huh. And uh, I don't know if it's still there or not. I think it is. Anyway, that was fun to walk through that tunnel and end up on the on the opposite side of the street. And then I'd walk along there <laughs> and uh, we laugh uh, because when I got to, oh, there was a Skeels Hotel mm -hmm. uh, where the frame shop is now. And that was kind of a hub. It had a uh, restaurant and a and, um, beauty shop and all the little hotel type of things. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was small, and next to it was uh, Kohler's, which was kind of an all-around um, general store. Mm -hmm. And then next to that was the M and H, and I think it was the M and H then. But I remember when I got to the M and H, I used to walk out in the street <laughs> because oh. I didn't like the way it smelled. <laughs> <laughs> the M and H is a, a tavern. It's a tavern. Here yes, in, yes, here in yes, town, yes, right yes, on yes. We're here this afternoon with uh, Loretta Johnson, and Loretta, it's such a pleasure to meet you and uh, have you come to talk with us about your remembrances of Morgan Hill and the San Martin area. We know that you belong to two famous families, the Roccos and the Bonfantes. Could you tell us how did you come to live in Morgan Hill? Well, I was born at um, Wheeler Hospital in Gilroy, and uh, my mom and dad um, had Rockus Market uh, when I was born, and so I lived on, in a little apartment right above the market until I was seven years old. Um, when I was seven, my dad decided to uh, retire for the first time, and he built a house on San Martin Avenue, and that lasted about a year. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I attended San Martin School. Well. Uh, uh, in elementary school, and a year later he started a store in San Juan Batista, which was the um, beginnings, he and his brother was the beginnings of the Knob Hill stores. Um, I attended Live Oak High School, mm -hmm. and then when I graduated from high school, I left the area for about, I'd say, 17, 18 years. Uh, married um, my husband, who was in the Air Force, and so I traveled around the country quite a lot and then came back when my children were five, four, and 18 months. Okay. And as you were growing up, what did you uh, and your family do for entertainment? Um, I was the only child, and uh, my dad loved uh, fishing, mm -hmm. so I did a lot of fishing with, with them. Uh, they had a lot of friends involved in fishing and hunting, and so they would had ga have gatherings, and uh, uh, I would... Uh, you know, help them out with the food. I've always loved to cook. Mm -hmm. um, I did do a lot of dancing. Uh, I started dancing when I was about three mm -hmm. um, and continued it even through the Second World War with the gas rationing. My mom would 
figure out a way to get me to my lessons <laughs> really? in San Jose, which was, you know, Oh, my. Yeah. And then when I went to Lone Mountain, I auditioned for San Francisco Ballet and, and oh. did get in the Corps. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so that was Congratulations. That's <laughs> quite, a, quite an accomplishment. Yeah. Um, with, with your family being in the, in the grocery business, and you said you were, uh, you liked to cook, w was, uh, was food such an, Im and cooking such an important part of life then as it is now, you know, it's... Oh, yes. Now, I, I'm kind of a frustrated caterer, actually. Are <laughs> Whenever there's a party, I always want to <laughs> get involved and do something, yeah. I'll, I really I'll definitely get your address. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do really do. I do enjoy it, and I enjoy gardening a, a lot, and, uh -huh. uh, and do some, some art, uh -huh. some painting. So are you in the San Martin area now, or are you in Morgan Hill? Well, well Dad bought property um, in 59, right on the border, which is Maple Avenue. Uh -huh. So my phone number is Morgan Hill, and my address is San Martin. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, he bought five acres, and um, uh, when I married again, he gave me half of the property as a gift. So he lived above, and I built my little house. And uh, it was a very tiny little house. And when my son and daughter-in-law came home to San Martin, they were living in Miami, um, they were looking for a house. And I was able to grandfather my house so that they could build. So all of us now live on the property. Oh, wonderful. So it's really nice. Well, that, that is quite, and that's quite a nice yeah. gift. And when Dad passed away, I gave his house to my daughter. Well, if you could ma uh, wave a magic wand and, and bring or change one thing about the area, what would it be? Guy, it's hard to say. Maybe I something we don't have or something that we, you think we need or... Um, I wish that more people would support our, our beautiful little, <coughs> our beautiful little village, you know, and we would have more, have more foot traffic and people would shop in the area more because it's just such an ideal, mm -hmm. ideal place. Yeah, I am a little saddened by the, uh, big stores that kind of take over from, you know, mm -hmm. the, since my dad was a independent small, right. small businessman. You've had that lifetime experience. Yeah, then. yeah that, that does make me a little sad. Mm -hmm. It's very convenient, <laughs> and I have to say I do use it. <laughs> but uh, it, uh, you know, it sad, saddens me to see a lot of small businesses mm -hmm. have to close. It's a real dichotomy, um, you know, because we're, we're caught in the middle. Yeah. Well, you know, with needing things, and especially young families, um, that they're the real consumers. You know, right, right. Clothes and shoes and bikes and, you know. Yeah. I try very hard to, to support and, and use the local and I encourage anyone that I'm in contact with to you know, try to do that as much as I can. Yeah. We're here today with Elena Moreno. And Elena, how, what brought you to Morgan Hill? I was born here. You were born here. The stork brought me here. The stork brought you to Morgan Hill. Well, then you must have lots of memories of Growing up here in Morgan Hill? I do. I didn't live in town. I lived on a prune ranch miles away, but my um, mailing address was Morgan Hill all my life. So, so uh, what was downtown like when you were growing up? Just a small village. The business district was perhaps four or five blocks long. And there was just one of everything that was needed, like one gas station, one bank, one general store one market, and so on. <laughs> and so did a lot of people live out in the outlying areas? Oh, yes. That's where the population was, on the ranches, because every ranch had generally three generations. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the houses represented that. There was a little place that the immigrant family lived in first. Sometimes it was a tank house. Uh -huh. And then there was a fine, a nicer house, and maybe their children had a really fine one, uh -huh. meaning stucco style of the <laughs> 1930s. And what do you mean by a tank house? Oh, I'm glad to be asked that. The first thing that uh, ranchers had to do was drill a well. Oh, okay. And then uh, they had to build a tower in order to get water power mm -hmm. with a tank on top, and then they would enclose that tower and make a living. Uh, 
place, generally of two stories. There was one on our Oberg Ranch, uh -huh. and we loved to go upstairs there. Oh, and so it's called a tank house. Uh -huh. And would it have, like, um, how do I say this, um, indoor plumbing? Would, would it have had indoor plumbing? I'm glad you asked about plumbing. Every <laughs> ranch had outside plumbing. Oh, okay. <laughs> but some of the nicer houses, such as my grandparents, um, had very, very fancy inside facilities. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I mean, carved dark wood and polished wood, and even the water tank above was like fine furniture. <laughs> but this was a Victorian home that my grandfather built after he'd been a successful miner. Mm -hmm. And all, if you ever see those white Victorians on ranches today, they were built at that time at the turn of that other century. Because... Uh -huh. uh, the 1900s, huh? Yes, and ours was started in 1898. Oh. And... Uh, Did you meet John here in Morgan Hill? Well, the joke is I met him in an apricot orchard <laughs> <laughs> because we were... Everybody worked in the apricots in July in this valley. Uh, but I didn't... We didn't go together until much later, three years later. Um, anyway, we were able to rent a little cottage right downtown on First Street, and our redwood tree in our yard is still growing there, oh, and it's very there. healthy. <laughs> and uh, it was completely furnished, pots, pans, and everything, for $24 a month. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and I bet you were happy there, huh? Oh, life has been fun all the way. I like, I'd like to say to Morgan Hill that it has been in existence for a century now, 100 years, and I've enjoyed 84 of them. Most people who've lived in Morgan Hill for a long time certainly know, because he was police chief here, a patrolman for five years, and then he became one of the youngest police chiefs in the state, a position he kept for a generation. And then when he tried to retire, they made him city manager, not once but twice. <laughs> <laughs> so he was rather well known, and he um, has been honored by having the new police department named for him. Mm -hmm. And the Skills Hotel, which was a lovely building, but they had to widen the street at one time because so much traffic was coming through. Oh my gosh. And so the so buildings that they couldn't move, they sliced off, and they <laughs> took off the front of the Skills building that was Italianate architecture and had beautiful balconies and so Oh forth. my gosh. And they turned it into a glass-enclosed dining room, which was very attractive and we thought modern. Uh. Oh, about the, about the balconies, of course. That's where I saw Swedish royalty. And being a Swedish descendant myself, uh, my grandma Oberg took me into town. Grandpa was dead by then. And uh, I remember sitting on the curb across the street from the hotel and seeing the Crown Prince of Sweden. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> speaking in the floor, just the, the, excuse me, the street, just absolutely crowded with, with people. people. This was the most exciting thing. And why did he come to Morgan Hill? because he came to dedicate Svedal, oh, okay. which is a Swedish resort back in the mountains. Right. I want to wish happy birthday to the city of Morgan Hill. Yes. Um, I'll do it in the language, which was the original one here, the li literal language. Uh, the Native American's language, I'm so sorry, was not recorded, uh, but Spanish was the major language here for 45 years and still exists, of course, but it was uh, discouraged after the American lawyers arrived <laughs> <laughs> in California. So, uh, feliz cumpleaños uh, a, la, a nuestra ciudad tan bonito, una ocasión de. Uh, de ser ciudad para un siglo, cien años. Uh, y, uh, muy buena suerte a la, la gente. Uh, la gente 
um, I want to say lucky, <laughs> afortunada, <laughs> afortunadas, <laughs> que viven aquí en este pueblo tan bonito.